ready. You ain't ready. Ready for say ready. Ready. You ain't ready. Ready for say ready. ready. What's up, young world? What is up, young world? Today, I got the incomparable. Now, y'all might have heard him already, okay? Um, promoting this record called Legend. This guy got a bunch of records. Uh, young guy, we in the A. He getting all the way busy. Er. This single goes by the name of Legend. Please help me welcome Ryan Fresco. What's going on, brother, 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 brother? <laughs> Not much. Well, that's a lie. You know, when, oh. people ask, when people ask me what's going on, man, I try not to get an auto, give like an autobiography, a whole background. Yeah. It's kind of hard not to because I got a lot going on in my mind and stuff. So, so wait a minute, yeah. wait a minute. I don't want you to, you, you about to go in on that. Listen, I got to sip, I got to sip the proverbial tea right now. <laughs> Hold on. Proverbial or actual? What is that? Never mind what's in my cup. Okay, grown man stuff over here. Grown man stuff over here, brother. So listen, so people heard the record legend. I made mm -hmm. sure that fire record, and that's not your only fire record. Um, yeah. Just, just let's start from a little bit of the beginning. You know, we don't have a, a, a whole lot of time, but we're going right. to get you covered. I want to, let's start from like, how did you get into being a writer and a recording artist? Man. First of all, I was a visual artist. I, I love to draw. Um, I love to write. Mm -hmm. Man, how that came together. It's like my creativity of my imagination of, you know, writing stories. I used to do comic books and I and one day I, I did like a, a, a comic book and I actually sold it at a wedding. Like I, I made tons of copies. And wait, 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 wait. You sold a comic book at a wedding. Black and white, I, I drew it myself. I think I, this is when I was at like, I was like six years old. And uh, so you was I, like, so you was like, damn, they day. Damn, they day. That's they day. Oh, yeah. But damn that, I'm trying to make a couple of dollars. Dude, nah, it wasn't even a couple of dollars. I made, I made a good like a hundred dollars selling. At six? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. So you were on your way then, okay. Bro, it was about some Egyptian pharaoh. Like I had this, I just made like a comic book and I it was crazy, but anyway, that's, I was like a visual artist, just a visual artist. I always wanted to grow up to be a visual artist. Uh, around 15, no, 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 let's say this. Around 13 years old, I like really fell in love with hip hop. Like mm. really, really. Now what, now what, they gonna wanna know, they gonna wanna know what Word. song was it? Do you remember the song of the artist that, 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 that hooked you in? Nowadays, everybody wanna talk when they got something to say, but nothing comes, comes out. out. Man, <laughs> hold Eminem. on, hold on. I got to point to where I'm from. I got to point to where I'm from. Now, you're from Detroit. I'm from Detroit. I listen. I know yeah. Marshall. I I know Marshall. Like I didn't know that. I was an extra in the movie Eight Mile with him, and I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was Eminem. Man. And what about what about Dre? Right? Is that the name of yeah, the song? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. So. Like stuff like that, and, and don't even get me started with Stan. Like I remember watching all oh. that, and not only do I remember the video, I remember the big fat, big fat, uh, big screen in my uh, grandparents' uh, living room. Yeah, like, I remember all of it. You know what I mean? Like you say big fat because it wasn't thin. Oh my god, that thing was like as thick as a couch. Like, <laughs> man. It was back in the days when they had like they had to make they had to really make space for a TV, like in the world. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, like Eminem, I would say Eminem made me fall in love with hip hop. Like, period. Wow. Like, he's the only artist. Wow. Only artist that I've had a poster of my entire life. Okay, so listen to the viewers. Check the irony of this. You got this young black king. And his his intro and what hooked him into hip hop was a white boy. Now mm -hmm. I know Marshall. He's not just a white boy. I'm saying that for context, but look at the irony in that. That's how dope Marshall is. Mm -hmm. That's that's an old to how dope he is. Go ahead, King. I'm sorry. Go ahead, King. I'm sorry. Nah, nah, nah. I love the ad lib. Like <laughs> you know. I don't want to explain everything. I need, you know, different perspective. But 
Yeah, man. Like, okay, so so like, so Eminem Eminem did it for you. Now I don't want to date myself too much. But <laughs> my 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 intro, uh, not intro, but what made me want to be involved was Special Ed. I'm the magnificent. Oh, man. And th- and then oh, I man. grew up, and then I, I I met him, and he asked to get on one of my records, and I'm like. You know, yeah. you're like that's like Eminem's like, yo, Ryan, can I let me let me let me let me drop a verse on this joint, man? That that'll blow your mind. Your mind will be blown, man, man. So okay, that's so, great. Like now, where my mom where, is a big fan of his, by the way. Special what? My mom is a big fan of Special Ed. So oh, is she? Oh, I'll let I'll let Special you know. I'll let Special you know. I'll let him know. I will text him. So where are you where are you from? I'm from Yonkers, New York. I'm, I was born in Valhalla, but you know, I that's like Yonkers, New York. Like I was, that's where I was born. Uh, man, I it's crazy. Like I've I've met some. I've, I've met DMX before, but I don't remember. Like I was five, yeah, I was like five, four years old when I met DMX. Um, wow. We used to see like, um, and I don't. It's crazy with the things I remember, but I don't remember because I. We saw like the locks like on the street, but it's it's things I don't remember. It's weird because I didn't care about music like that as a you know right. five years old and stuff like that. I remember like Cross County and Palisades Mall in New York as yeah. like five years old, but I don't remember that stuff. But um, yeah, like uh, so, I'm from I'm from Yonkers, New York. So I mean, like that's like the man. Shout out, shout out. Yaka, shout out, shout out, LOX, shout out. But they try to play me a lot because I'm from Yonkers, right? But getting my uh, birth certificate, they try to play me because I'm not like in, like born in the city, city, like the, you know what I mean? Like, so they put something else on your birth certificate. No, but people try to play you a lot, like you're not valid in New York. But I don't get that because we got Jada Kiss. We got, you know what I mean? Like Yonkers got like. Oh, oh, I see what you said. Like Yonkers is not really part of. Yeah, like a lot of people see, say that. See, don't worry about that. Listen, I used to live in Long Island and they did the same thing about Long Island. Ah, you know what's crazy? Mm. My uh, So my sister's godmother is Latanya. I mean, it's Mary J. Blige's sister. And oh, when wow. I was, yeah, yeah. When I was four or five years old, six, I used to go to Long Island because that's where they used to live. <laughs> And Mary, she 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 looked just like. So Mary's sister. your cousin. No, 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 no. Mary it's your cousin's is, sister, right? Okay, so Mary is so Latanya is Mary's sister, and she's like best friends with my mother. Oh, best friends, not okay, okay. I thought yeah, she was yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Or one of her, one of her good friends for like a long time. I don't know about best friends, but yeah, we used to go to like Mary J. Blige's house in Long Island. Yeah. I used, to, I used to get uh, her and her sister, uh, Latanya and Mary J. Blige mixed up and stuff like that. Really? That's pretty much only my, that's, that's my only connection with Long Island, really. That's all good. That's, <laughs> hey, 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 whatever your connection is. Okay, so, so listen. You know, I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been checking on you. You know what I'm saying? You know that. You know, I've been checking on yeah. you. What, I, I got a question. You know, young artists coming up, a lot of a lot of artists sing and they rap, mm-hmm. okay. And I tell them, you have to choose how you. You don't have to choose which one you want to do. You can do both, but sometimes you have to choose how you present yourself to the world. So the world is, we the world is sheep, bro. Period. Sheep. Okay. They follow the shepherd point that way and they go without question, right? They, they, they're not most, of, a lot of people, right? So I say you have to choose one to present yourself and you can add the rest. Like, right. Missy Elliott can sing for real. Missy Elliott can sing for real, but she presented herself to the world as a hip hop artist. You right. see what I'm saying? And that was by design. Now, as things progress and in, in the independent and major artists evolve, I see more and more of fusions where you don't got to choose how you present. You can present yourself as both. Look at Drake. Yeah. Drake is a prime example. Mm-hmm. How do you classify yourself as an artist? Man. 
Well, if we were starting, like, if I was to explain myself right now, it's like, I'm still going through a process. Like, it sounds good to me, but it's not, I have not reached where I need to, where it's just like, fuse. Like, this guy is this. Mm. And I completely respect what you said, because that's the way I think. Like, you can have a good record, right? You can have the best record in the world, but what if it's that record that, comes out and it's the record that you didn't think was going to blow up and now people this is your perception like this is how people view you right? happens every day yeah so th that's why i'm so i treat my music so peculiar like i i sent you a song called uh uh what's it called is it called cold i think i sent cold to you mm -hmm. and I'm like singing at the beginning, then I'm rapping like the first verse, and then I'm like singing the bridge, the hook, and then the second verse. And um, I, I, when I listen to that song, I think about replacing the rap verse with like a singing verse. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's like it's, I'm still in that fusion yeah. part. Like it sounds good. Like I have so many unreleased songs. Like, and I just listen to them sometimes on, on SoundCloud, and I go down the list, and it's like these songs mesh together these songs go together right even though i'm rapping on this song this goes with the singing song and stuff like that so man it took a while but i'm getting like really 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 close to like hey this is who this guy is you know what i mean no matter if he's rapping or singing you know watch this i know exactly the space you in and and and, and let me tell you something until well i was going what i was going to say was when you blow up, like like you said, it, it'd be that song. Whatever song that is, now that's who you are to the world. So now since that song or that type of record is working, now you have to do that because you know what works. You're not gonna go the opposite way experimenting when you already know what what's working at that time, right? So I know it's space you in, but let me tell you this. Songwriting and song creation should be, in my professional opinion, a reflection of where you're at at that time. That song should be a Polaroid snapshot of that moment. Tomorrow, you might be in a whole nother space. So you will have to write a whole nother type of song. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But as long as you're evolving as a human, your, your writing and your style is going to be evolving too. So I say all that to say, don't get caught up in, even if it works, this is who I am. Because you're not the same Ryan you were three years ago, are you? No, oh, hell no. Not even three months ago. So you say, you, Look, okay. So are you going to be the same Ryan three years from now? You don't know who that Ryan is, but you know it's not going to be the one you are today. So mm -hmm. your music shouldn't be the same either. So it's no Ryan is this. It's Ryan is this. Mm -hmm. See that? Constantly yeah. evolving. That's Ryan. That should be all artists. Man, I mentor so many artists and I help develop so many artists. And the problem with music nowadays, <clears throat> not the problem, but the challenge is it's so easy. It's, it's, it looks really easy. Oh yeah. To be a star doing this. Whereas before when I'm coming up, oh Lord, I hate to say it, but you had to be you had to be that shit. Yeah, you, you, you had to be you the competition me, was retarded. It wasn't no technological advances that can help you out like auto-tune. It wasn't none of that. If you if you were a singer, what no auto-tune. You mm -hmm. had to really sing. Or you could forget because the competition was craziness. And now it's a little bit plus you got all the different outlets like Savon's legendary podcast and others to, to help get you out there. But nah, it had to be your talent back then to talk for you. Yeah. So let me ask you this. And I know you're aware of these things. You're, you're super smart, obviously. Sure. Uh, I know you're aware of this. Let me ask you this. Do you think that today's brand of hip hop is better than, let's say, the 90s and early 2000s? 
I know what you're gonna say, but I ain't gonna say nothing. Go ahead. Yeah, you know what I'm gonna say. Like, it's crazy because my boss, like, I thought I worked part time. I worked full time. Jesus, Christmas. But anyway, <laughs> you know, and I learned, and I and I figured out. I was like, you know, all these hours I spent with my boss. Wait, I hit such and such hours. But anyway, I speak to her like she likes a. Oh, she's she's a white woman, but she likes all kinds of music, and um, we 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 talk about this all the time. But definitely the 90s, uh, like I'd rather listen to music from the uh, mid 2000s because that's when I was getting into hip hop. But I'll tell you right now, in the 90s, like you have to come with, man, you can't come with gimmicks in the 90s. Like you, <laughs> there's no, there, of course there's personality, like there's, there's old dirty bastard, like, it's, it's charisma, but nowadays it's more of image than actual content. And until we reverse that and switch it back around, it's only going to get worse. You know what I mean? It, it's going to come back around. Everything come back around. But man, I feel, I feel so. I feel. Oh so. yeah, absolutely, man. In the nineties, this is in radio on the same radio station. Whatever radio station you want, you had Mary J. Blige, Big. Pac, ODB, Arrested Development, Tracy Chapman, um, uh, uh, Diggable Under, uh, uh, Digital Underground, Diggable Planets. You had all of these, it, all of these different frequencies and and, and alternative playing rock, back, rock right too. back, back, to, and now I feel. I swear to God, I feel like I heard the same song seventeen times in a row. It'd be a different artist, different song. Everything sounds the same. And it'd been like that. Mm -hmm. You know what's crazy? Uh, kind of off topic, but you know, this is an interview, but, and it kind of goes with context. Like songwriting, I, I never take like, I take a little bit of the, the creativity from songwriting today, but it's more of like the context from back then not i'm not talking about this i'm talking it's, it's modern but i use the concepts and kind of creative style that they write in to how i make my music mm -hmm. um three days i think it's three days ago now two two or three days ago this woman she dm me and she's like she likes my music and she's asked me if i write my own music and i was like yeah and i was just uh last night i started a song because she wanted me to do a song for her kid's birthday his name is Oliver he's turning seven mm. and I just started that song and she paid me in advance and everything and I showed her like a snippet of the song she's like excited for that and I'm like man oh. I don't know I don't know like the the people nowadays like the artists nowadays are influenced by the art the artists nowadays I don't know if they could do that like take off that hat and go make a freaking birthday song for a kid you know what I mean like well I don't know either, but I do know that if you're a writer, you can. If you're a real writer, That's see, what I am. before music, I was a writer. You know? <laughs> no, listen, you gotta understand. I'm doing this a long time. I'm, I'm a I'm a writer first. I'm, I'm a writer. I'm a singer. I'm a rapper. It just so happens that I rap better than I sing, and I write better than I rap. But rapping is what coming out of my mouth versus writing something down. That's what I'm best at. I, I can't tell you how many sync licensing deals, like I can't tell you how many movies and stuff my, my music is in and who other artists I've written for. I've toured myself, like I've done a lot, but I'm a writer first. So I, I have gotten those calls and those DMs that say, hey, can you do something? I have to put on a writing hat. And that's mm -hmm. what you, and that's the net man sharp in that skill. And you already on it. You already yeah, on it. Yeah, it was it, like not to be like cocky, but it was light work. Like it's because I, I I've written so many. Like I can't tell you how many songs that I've written. It's, it's, it's got to be like somewhere between twenty five hundred, three thousand. Not necessarily recorded and finished. Oh yeah, but it's got to be somewhere between twenty five hundred, three thousand. And I told my mom that she was like, "You didn't write that many songs." I'm like, "Why?" Like I, yeah. <laughs> mom, like, you I got it a lot. Man, like, <laughs> It's so easy. Like, uh, I sent you the song Superman. I actually updated that song. That's what I like about SoundCloud. You can upload, reload, uh, re upload a new file. 
and I sent you the song called Superman. I, I wrote that song like 20 minutes. Uh, this dude that I know, he had that uh, this beat um, on YouTube, and I just went in. That was just like so easy to do. I actually just put up a performance that I did in my garage <laughs> of that on Instagram. But uh, let's 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 reverse a little bit. So let me tell you something that you do not know about like our little relationship. The day I met you mm -hmm. is the same day. Okay, so I wasn't even gonna go out there. I was with my mom. She was just like, Ryan, uh, I don't want you out there because, of course, she's being a mom. She's like, I don't want you going out there, yada, yada, yada. I was like, my, like, I got to, like, make these connections. Like, I got to, you know, I'm trying to help myself. The day I met you is the same day. I don't know if you know, but I got in a car crash. And mm. it was leaving the club after I met you. Wow. Um. Yeah. I got hit by a drunk driver. I got, I, I flew in between, yeah. You know how like, well, you know, because you're in, you, you you know Atlanta, you can go this way and merge onto a main highway, or you can go straight and go up to a go over a bridge, sort yeah. of like Spaghetti Junction. I got I was going this way, he hit me, and I went in between like the roads up a hill onto the bridge. Like I hit the railing and went over the railing onto the bridge. So I was like lucky to be alive that night. The whole front of my car is just wow gone, and I've been using other you know other people's cars and. Uber and I'm about to actually get my car fixed because you know I'm finally getting my money right like that's but yeah that's that's, that's crazy like crazy if I, didn't, if I didn't go out there like I'm really not about to go out there I would never met you you wouldn't even be doing this interview right now but it's crazy because like when I was in that crash it I I wasn't even panicking it was like mm. I, I don't even know how to describe it it was like I was in my element like it was fun like <laughs> Mm. And it's crazy because I was I, I was describing this to this girl the other day and she was like, You liked it, didn't you? And I was like, Yeah, like yeah, I thought it was cool. Like, <laughs> yeah. And then when I stopped and got out of my car, I looked at it, I was like, damn. But then I was like, cool afterwards. I was like, yeah. hey, I'm still alive. It's 2 a.m. in the morning. I don't know where I am. Oh I'm my alive. God. You know what I mean? Like, I was just no. glad that I went out there. Like, I didn't mind it. Like, it's crazy. I didn't mind the car crash. Like, I was just glad that I went out there and try to make some connections because. That's because I'm going to tell you what. what I want to do. Like, <laughs> I'm going to tell you what. You, you, it was fun to you. That's because you're young. <laughs> let, me you, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let Uncle Say put you up on something, baby. Uh, you get a little older. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God. Listen, man. Well, I, well obviously. Thank God that you are right. First and foremost, you know, the money, the car, you know, you figure that out. But man, you got to be careful. Especially, man, listen, Atlanta got the worst drivers per capita in the whole northern. It was just me and him on the highway. It was just me. That's and how him. bad. That's how bad they are. <laughs> that's how bad of a driver. They picked the one car on the road and hit it. Listen, thank God. Like I said, thank God everything is all right with you and you were able to come on the podcast and we can learn a little bit more about Ryan Fresco. So, so far, let's do a, a quick recap. Mm -hmm. Ryan Fresco is in an experimental space. He's written thousands of records. He sings, he writes, he raps. He, car crashes are fucking fun. Uh, <laughs> uh, his mother loves him to death. Uh, 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 and, I, and, and, I, and I'm glad I got to talk to him again after the night meeting him. Okay, so that's so that's, that's a recap. So this is what we about to do, because <clears throat> I've been I've been playing this over in my head, and I was like, do I know what he gonna say, or do I not? <laughs> so I I don't want to guess no more. Okay, so this is what we gonna do. Alright. And you can't you don't got a lot of time to think about this. You just okay. gotta come okay. kind of off the top, and this is all your opinion. This has, this does you know there's no right or wrong answer. Okay, yeah. here we go. Yeah. On the rapping side, top five dead or alive. Damn, that quick. Shit. You should already know what you you should already know who you got. No, you know what's crazy is my list was is was solid then fluid until a couple of days ago. But uh, man, like I, I'm, five, let's go. I'm definitely putting Biggie in there. Nobody okay. has support, nobody has a voice or flow. Definitely mm -hmm. Jay. Nobody okay. has his voice or flow. Okay. Uh, I'm def M is definitely in there. Who? Eminem. M. Okay, we got three. 
Don't start why don't start pulling your hair out now, son. <laughs> mm. Who we got? Who we I, I want to put somebody in there so bad. Nas is definitely in there. Like, okay, there. we got one more, B. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I'm thinking if I want to pick somebody from this generation, though. Like, no, it's it's you ain't got to be fair to nobody. This is your top five. Nobody else matters. Whatever, this is yours. Man. Okay, we just, got. Just let you know this. This 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 list will probably change, but you know, I want. Come on, man. So we got. So we got Big. We got. We got J. We got M. And we got Nas. And Nas. God, man. I want. I'm gonna either say. There's like a couple I want to put in there, but I just I just say K dot, man. I just say K-Dot. Okay. I didn't want to hey, say K-Dot. That's not a bad A. Hey, that's not a hey, That's not a bad. I didn't want to put Kendrick in there, but. Yes, you did, because you said, what you don't, don't, don't double back now, nah, bitch. No, 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 no. I'm not double back. It's because I was so unsure. Like. Okay. Now, now. But I, I'm respecting him even more. Like, listening to him, I'm respecting him even more. Like, it's evolution. Man. Now, yeah, you, you do realize. This guy. My, my bad. What you say? The fact that he actually cares about his discography, man. Like, you know what well, I mean? Watch this. So we, it's, it's another category I'm about to ask you about. But, you know, just to <laughs> let you know, you did pass up on Snoop, uh, Rakim, Ice Cube. I, see, see, I was going to say. Hold Rakim. on, No, this is my turn. My turn. <laughs> Go ahead. My turn. Nah, nah, nah. Drake. Um, oh, my God. Red and meth. Oh, my God. Uh, it's so many. Now, for me, mm -hmm. Big is not in my top five. Mm. It's not in my top five because I don't think he had enough time to evolve. Mm -hmm. That and it's not his fault, but yeah, he didn't have enough. He didn't have enough time to give me more. He's great. He gave me enough to be great, but to be the top five in ever. To me, he didn't give me enough. My top five, simple. Pa and you didn't put Pac in there. Oh, jeez. Well, you you said rappers. You said, no, it's my turn. Rappers. No, 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 no. You, you no, named no, all these no, rappers no, that no. don't even write, though. Huh? Snoop, Q. Like, these guys have writers, like, a lot of them. No, they don't. Not at no. all. I, first of all, ooh, ooh, ooh. Everybody watching, don't get him. He don't know. He, don't get him. Don't leave him alone. He don't know. Ice Cube was the only writer in NWA. He wrote for Easy E. Easy E went platinum. Ice Cube was the writer for them. Ice Cube is a writer first. Snoop Dogg doesn't write anything down. He freestyles. Period. Period. They don't write. Them. They don't got no writers at all. Never have. They are the writers. Okay. My top five is Pac. In no particular order. Pac, J, Nas, M, Rakim. Got to put Rakim. I toured with him for two years. And if it wasn't for Rakim, it wouldn't be none of them other people. Mm -hmm. Eminem said he patented, he patented his first whole shit behind Rakim. Studied him. Eminem says this. If it wasn't no ride, it wouldn't be none of these artists. Mm -hmm. And Rakim is still packing out shows. Okay, that's my top five. Now, next category. On the singing side. There's two categories on the singing side. Uh-oh. Come on, because we got to keep this moving. We ain't going to beat a lot of um, let's go, let's go, let's go. thinking. You ready? <laughs> no, you're not ready because you don't know what I'm going to ask you. The singing side. Best male vocalist of all time. Top five. Man, you got, you're going to say some of these are overrated. Uh, what is this on my screen? Uh, man, <clears throat> just, my, just mine. Like, forget objective, uh, objectivity. I'm going to put Michael Jackson in there, even though they try to say he's, his vocals are overrated. It's, it's it's he's just too unique. Um, I'm gonna put Prince in there. Nice too. Um, and this is not just like R and B singing, right? Like, yeah, it's just R and B singing or no? I mean, in my head, it was. If you want to ask someone else, you can. It doesn't have to be. Mm. We had two, two great ones. We're talking about voices, Chris Brown, super underrated. His voice is crazy. Yeah, it um, is. That's three. Man. 
R and B. I'm I'm gonna put Marvin Gaye in there. I'm gonna put yeah. Marvin Gaye. That, that's not a, that, that's not like a you're like uh, I guess I'll put no. That, oh, it's because there's so many in my head. I'm put Marvin yeah. Gaye. In there. Uh, And they don't. I told her I got long ass fingers. I, I, I used to be subconscious. I don't want to put anybody modern in there. There's so many good voices nowadays. Okay, a voice that I really like is SZA. I just throw it in there because you said you said vocal. Well, you said male vocalist. Never mind. Yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Everybody gets stuck on number five. Yeah. <laughs> It's like the hip hop. I was actually gonna put Rakim instead of Kendrick, but that's hilarious. Um, All right, who you got? I don't. I, I don't even know. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. <laughs> the weekend. The weekend. Of course, the weekend. The weekend. Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. Oh, okay. I didn't forget. That's that's what I was gonna say first, but <laughs> yeah, the weekend. His voice. Man, yeah. All right, everybody, I, look, comment below what y'all think about Ryan's top five hip hop artists and his top five male vocalists of all time. Now, just to do a quick recap, his hip hop artist was Biggie, Nas, J, M, and Kendrick Lamar. His best male vocalist was. The Weeknd, Michael Jackson, Prince. Who else you say? Chris Brown. Chris Brown. Chris Brown. And who was the fifth? That was five, wasn't it? Michael Jackson, Prince, The Weeknd, Chris Brown. Marvin Gaye. Marvin Gaye, yeah, yeah. That's not a bad, I, I guess, not a bad top five. <laughs> not a bad top five. So listen, man. What's what's next for Ryan Fresco, man? Are you? I like the comic book idea. Do you still do that? Comic books? Yeah. I sketch. Like I'll draw like every now and again. Like that's yeah. a skill that I can never lose, man. Like I I edit my own videos too. Like the stuff you see me put out, I edit those. Like it's just like a creative thing where I can't like lose. You know what I mean? Dope. Like, really... Since you can draw, you know what would be dope idea? If you wrote a song with a whole lot of imagery words, right? Very mm -hmm. creative. So you paint the picture. The sky was blue. It was kind of muggy. And imagery, you write a song and then sketch that one scene with all the imagery. That's and, then put that, and then put that out with the record. Woo! I just wrote your marketing campaign. You're welcome. Well, I was thinking about doing that, actually. I did that for, um. I don't know if you noticed, uh, I have this, like, uh, he's kind of like my avatar. His name is Skelly. He's like a skeleton. Um, that got to do with your hand, the glove, right? Yeah, yeah. but you, hey, now what's that about? I, I've been noticing so, that. What's that about? I just, it's crazy because like ever since I was a kid, like I'm only and for Halloween, like we didn't really celebrate Halloween, but when I did, like actually get to dress up, I always want to dress like a skeleton for some reason. Really? Like, I always dress as a skeleton. Really? And I don't know. I don't. Yeah, I have. I don't know what my obsession was with skeletons. My mom hated it because. You know, represents death or whatever. Like, but I just thought it was cool. I, I felt like it really like uh, represents, you know, that rock image that I am. Like, okay, yeah, it's it's something that has just always stuck with me. Like, just skeletons, and I just decided to use it. Like, I never used it. Yeah, I think I wasn't comfortable in the space where I said like, hey, I can make this. This is this. Uh, I can make alternative rock, and you know, I can you know put that all together in one. Yeah. But it's funny that you say that because the imagery, because when I was writing Numb, that's, if you listen to like what I was writing, yeah, I had a picture in my head, like when I was I writing. like that joke, man. Yeah, it's I'm like, gonna play, I'm gonna I'm I'm play that joke. We, we gonna, when, when yeah, it's like, edited, I'm gonna make sure that's in there. I yeah, like that I, joke. I had that, I had the image in my head. It's just so easy. And even Superman, like I had an image in my head, like, that image in my head was actually the house. That, like I'm in my grandparents' house right now. It was like I had my grandparents' house in my head. Like, yeah, yeah. If you listen to the song, it's like I'm talking about my feet up, like, like feet up on the on the table. It's your grandparents' house. Feet up on the table. 
Ooh, boy, that would have been <laughs> boy, that would have been the whip whippington. You know, I, well, this, this is the whip now. It would have been <laughs> his two different whips. <laughs> grandparents house and you started with your feet up on it oh lord geez. oh man you know yeah. like if I, if I if i really told you what i was doing in my grandparents house under nah, the, under not. the guidelines of, eh, nobody want to hear that yeah let's go let's, let's, <laughs> yeah let's not let's not so check this out man check this out so what are you working on next are you working on a full length project so what I'm doing right now is um, I'm putting out uh, music weekly and I'm putting out videos also on TikTok. I actually just dropped my uh, latest video on TikTok. Now I'm pro I'm mainly promoting on SoundCloud right now. Like I just got 30 followers in like the past uh, week, which is actually kind of, it's not great. But no, that's good. It's That'll be, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. So, and um, now that I'm actually starting to like make money and do what I need to do correctly, like I, I, I work a full-time job and at the same time mm -hmm. I do other stuff to make money. I'm actually into affiliate marketing. Like that's, that's the money that I'm putting into like my promotions right now. So I just promoted this other video that I have on Instagram. Uh, I'm actually doing a promotion through this guy from the UK. He has like a probably like 80 K followers. I'm actually, I actually sent him the money today to do that. So like now is the time, man. Like I just put out a Kill video, it, man. Superman, content, like content, content content i love that you put out a record a week and a video don't listen until 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 they get sick of you beat them in the head till they get sick of you there's only one way for them to get sick of you is they know who you are say you know like, let, me, let me tell you man like <laughs> and it's you gotta fight these things in your head like there's so many things that people say and tell you and you hear it's like you shouldn't be putting out records every week you shouldn't be doing this you shouldn't be doing that but what I've learned from reading books and listening to audio books and all these people who have been great and successful is they made a plan and they stuck to that plan. Period. There was no like diverting going somewhere else. It was just like, this is what I'm going to do and I'm going to keep doing it. And the thing I like about TikTok is your videos can gain traction like way later. And they implemented this thing where you could actually promote the videos kind of like how you do ads on TikTok. I mean, mm -hmm. excuse me, on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And so those videos are just sitting there. You know what I mean? Like they're not going anywhere. I can promote them whenever I want to. And all of these songs that I have right now, like I can promote, I can promote them for as long as I want to. Like I, I really feel like I'm at least like a top tip, like no BS. Like I'm a top ten artist on this planet. That's how I feel. Like you nobody better feel like that. No, it's not even like a feeling. It's like I know. Like if I go into a studio with any artist, give us like two hours. No engineers, no nothing. There's nobody that's gonna. Well, I'm not gonna say nobody. There's plenty of people, but gonna go in there, mix and master their stuff, and get out. Like that's that's literally what I do. And it's all coming together. Like I just got better and better at mixing and mastering. And if I go in the room with anybody, yeah. nobody on this planet is watching me on a the track. There's nobody on this planet that's watching me on the track. <laughs> nobody. There's absolutely nobody. Hey. Like the way I write my music, I, I, can, I, I write songs like it's it's like it's it's second nature. Like I can write a song like that. Right. Like and, and you know what? <clears throat> You're gonna get better too. It's no, listen, it's no problem believing wholeheartedly that you're great, okay? I know, I know. I, it's got me in trouble, but I know. <laughs> All I'm, it's no, listen, it's, you, you need that confidence because that confidence is going to save your career. It's going to save your life one day because that's all you're going to have is confidence. Sometimes, you know, it's a roller coaster, but when you're at the low point, you need something to keep you in the game. And a lot of times it's going to be simply your confidence. So never, never get rid of that. Okay. Mm -hmm. the, the best people I come to find are the humblest people. The people with the most success are the humblest people. Okay. Always remember that the nigga with all the jewelry on and all the foreign cars and all the designer, all of these type of things. He needs affirmation or she needs affirmation. That's why they are doing these things. Mm -hmm. But let me, I'll give you a perfect example. I was a manager um, at a club called Tiger Tiger in Marietta. 
I know Don't, that. Uh -huh. I, know, I know that spot. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I opened that spot. I opened oh, it. Wow. So, yeah, I hear it every day too on the radio. Oh yeah, I, I opened that spot. I was the entertainment manager. So we had Young Thug come in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody, he's in VIP. He's right next to the DJ booth. Everybody got their cameras out, which is really weird. Y'all youngsters are really weird. Y'all go in the club, but celebrities in there. All you're doing is drinking champagne, and you got your video cameras right up to it, and you're just watching them. Ain't nobody dancing, ain't nobody, just watching them. Just, that's really weird. Anyways, in the back of the room, everybody's focused on Young Thug. He got all his jewelry, he got his security, he got, you know, in the back of the club by himself was none other than Kevin Lyles by himself. Kevin, you know, Young and Thug is managed by Kevin Lyles, but Kevin Lyles also owns 300 Entertainment, which is a record label. Okay, what, is he, what is he spearhead again? Oh, Kevin, Kevin Lyles? Yeah, yeah. He, 300, 300 Entertainment. I, I, that's, his, that's his record label. But Kevin yeah, Lyles- was something else like with it too. No, Kevin Lyles has been VP of Universal. He's been with Def Jam. Like he's a CEO executive. Mm -hmm. My point is nobody knew who cared who he was and he was the most powerful person in the room. I look back. And I'm like, what? And I, at this point, I had never met Kevin Lyles. Mm -hmm. I was like, so I go back there, talk to him. Now, 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 now I got his cell phone number. We text all, listen. But my point is, he wasn't loud. He had no jury, at, like, but he was the most, by far, the most powerful person probably in the county at that time, mm -hmm. period. So you always have to make sure that you understand and can, and can discern who needs affirmation and who is just who they are without, it don't matter what, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So if you can keep that, I mean, but you're already on your way. You know, Uncle Say just trying to drop a couple jams to I'm the youngster. I, I, you, you, you're like, you know, like my vibe, but like, I'm not, I'm not trying to go into a club with a bunch of diamonds on and stuff. Like, I like diamonds, like, don't get me wrong. Like, but I'd never wear like 50 chains like these dudes. Bro, I'd get yeah. so many rashes. <laughs> like, uh, do, do, do you have 50 diamond chains? Nah, and I never will. You don't know that. You I don't, don't want to. That, yeah, if that's, your, if to. that's your style. Yeah, if that's your style, yeah, you I, might not. I don't want cool. to. Like, I'd have diamond chains, but I wouldn't have like a collection of 50. No way. Now watch this. Now watch this. Just to be clear, for the artists that's watching this that do have that and do care about that, there's nothing wrong with that as long as that doesn't define who you are. You see what I'm saying? So I want to make that very clear. Now, I don't want to, I don't want them to, you know, you've seen a little pop-up. I don't want them to kick us off of here. So just in case they do, I got one last question for you, Ryan. <clears throat> Man, I want to do like a two-hour interview with you. Uh, and so that'd be incredible. <laughs> well, I, I'm gonna figure it out. I'm we, you, I'm gonna figure it out. If if something were to happen, okay, where you couldn't do no more music. Mm -hmm. And you had one song to write that could explain exactly who you are and what you want people to remember about Ryan Fresco. Watch this. What would be the name of that song? Last Forever. Mm. See, it took no look, it took no thought on that. Last Forever. I like that. That might be the name of the words, album. Baby. Words, words come as soon as melodies to me. Like some yeah. people's just melody, like words. You just, want it. You know what I mean? You want, like, it. you want it. That's what's up. Well, listen, man. It was awesome. Great talking to you. The guys from Yonkers, y'all going to get his, you're going to put some respect on Ron Fresco name. You're going to put some respect on Yonkers. He got the record out, Legend, and he's going to put out a record. Now, what's your TikTok? How can people get at you on TikTok? Same as my Instagram is just R Y E N F R E S C O Ryan Fresco. I'm gonna put a, um, I'm gonna put your at in the uh, description of this video and make sure everybody because I want people need to see you, brother. You on your way. If you need something from me, you got my number. Call me, okay? Is there anything sure. you want to say to the people before we check out of this thing? Man, <laughs> right now is the time. Like, I run a community called Project X. We we just probably hit like 32 members. Man, these kids, like, there's kids in there that look up to me, and it's crazy, like, 
I just reviewed a track for uh, this kid named Isaac in my uh, community. He's just like, mm-hmm. he's posting it everywhere, like my review and stuff. I'm just like, man, like, that's all I need. Like, and a woman paying me, she actually, it was supposed to be $300 for the song, just to put that out there, for the birthday song. She accidentally put 3000 but she still sent me the $3,000 saying she trusts me to give it back to her. And I just sent her, because the limit was $1,500, I just sent her $1,500 back. Like, that's the, that's the shit I live for. Like, she knew, like, I'm going to send the money mm. back. You know what I mean? Like, so everything you, I get, so I your, your integrity level is high. Your integrity, you have a high oh, yeah, integrity like, That's what's up. What, what am I doing? What, th- this is what I want to say before I get off. It's not, if you get something to me, it's how you get it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, there's no living with yourself if you did something that's, you know, the complete polar opposite right. of, you know, the antithesis of your morals. Right. You're like, you're, you can't, there's nobody that can live with that. Like, I don't care what anybody, everybody has morals. You can be the most evil person on the world, like, you still have morals. You know what I mean? And well, you, 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 you well that, hopefully. Hopefully. Well, I'll tell you what. <clears throat> Ryan Fresco was a trustworthy youngster, obviously. <laughs> you know, he ain't sent me the money, so... Uh, I'll, I ain't, he ain't sending me that 1500 But uh, listen, Ryan Fresco, I appreciate you, man. Thank you for coming on to the Save All Legendary Podcast. Hope you had a good time. I learned a lot about you. We're going to be in touch. Your music going to be on here. Y'all, make sure y'all show this youngster some love um, at R-Y-E-N-F-R-E-S-C-O. Okay. This has been Save All's Legendary Podcast, episode number eight. As always... Peace, young world. Awesome. Please attend the sun.